Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, and what I would like to do with you in this video is show you how to use the My Solar System Simulator to describe the motions of stars and planets in outer space. You can see a little screenshot of the simulator which I have annotated here. It looks a little bit like this. I'll show you how this works in a moment. But uh, before we start using the simulator, what I would like to do is talk to you about a case study in which the movement of an object in space uh, was very was pretty intriguing and got scientists thinking. So at the turn of the century, uh, 1900s, early 1900s, scientists were building more and more precise telescopes and other instruments that they were using to, to scan the skies and, and to make more and more precise observations of what was going on. And one of the objects that uh, they observed and found some very interesting uh, data on was Sirius. Now we've met Sirius before, briefly. Uh, Sirius is uh, the brightest star in the sky, at least in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's a uh, blue giant. It's many times uh, more luminous than our sun. It's very, very bright. Uh, and as scientists observed Sirius with these very sensitive instruments, what they noticed was that uh, it moved. It was moving. It was wobbling. So its orbit, it's a little bit hard to, to read this here, but what would happen is that Sirius... Uh, over the course of about 50 years, it would kind of stay put, it wouldn't really move that much, and then it would have a big wobble, and then it would go back to where it was for about another 50 years, and then it would have another big wobble. So we see there was a big wobble from uh, about 1935 to about 1945. There was a big wobble during that 10-year span. It moved really fast, and then over the last, next several decades, it moved pretty slowly. Uh, and so uh, this that had a period of about 50 years. About every 50 years, Sirius wobbles. And uh, it took scientists a while to figure out why it was happening. Why is this bright star in the constellation Canis Major uh, wobbling every 50 years? And what they discovered was that it has a little companion. It has a very tiny star which is orbiting uh, uh, Sirius. So here's Sirius, and you can see it's so bright that it almost just uh, glares out its companion star right here. This is a very tiny, white, whitish colored star. And you might remember that a small, dim, whitish star is called a white dwarf. And so what this means, and it's moving. It's actually orbiting. It's moving moving around Sirius. And so uh, I'll show you a, a, an image of this in just a moment. But this little white dwarf uh, was actually, uh, at one time, uh, a red giant. And it burned off all those gases. And so what we have left is just this tiny little white, dim dwarf. It's very, very hot, uh, but it's, uh, it's rather dim. And so I want to show you, I want to show you uh, what this uh, sort of looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. And what you can see is happening. This here is the bright Sirius that we can see in the night sky very easily. Uh, this is uh, Sirius A, we call this. This is the blue giant. And over here, swooping by really fast, this is Sirius B. This is that dwarf that I showed you in the picture. This is that dwarf star, this little white dwarf. And you might make a few interesting observations uh, about this pair of stars as they're, as they're orbiting around. One thing is that they don't orbit in the way that you would picture an orbit. Like if you think of our solar system, you might think of the sun kind of sitting still and all the planets zipping around it. But in here we have a weird situation where we have Sirius is almost intersecting the orbit of this other star, Sirius B, and notice that when they're close together, Sirius B and Sirius A both move really quickly. And then when they get farther away, they slow down. So now they're not moving very fast anymore. They're kind of slowing down. Uh, you might also notice that Sirius B, the little white dwarf, has a huge orbit, very big orbit, uh, several times the area of Sirius A. And Sirius A is rather small here. So we have kind of this little tight orbit of the, the big massive star and a big big sprawling orbit for this little star Sirius B. And uh, so scientists have modeled the movement of this, this star system, even though they can barely see uh, Sirius B, just based on the movements of Sirius A. They assumed, well, there must be something there. And they found it. It's this little companion. Uh, and so this companion star is actually even easier to see if you look at it in x-rays. So if we see, this is the Chandra Space Observatory that has pictured uh, Sirius uh, A and B. You can see Sirius A is the really bright x-ray source in the middle, and then you've got Sirius B, this tiny little companion right there. And uh, so what I want to do is to show you how can we use 
simulators in order to understand how planets move. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So uh, I have a document here. This is the simulator. But I have a document here, um, which I handed out in class, and I'm also going to put on my website, uh, that has the, uh, the, the URL right here for how you're going to use the simulator. The first page describes some instructions for how to use it. But there are a few different scenarios that I'm going to ask you to run uh, in the simulator. So to use the simulator, uh, when you type this URL into Explorer, uh, this should come up. Chrome is phasing out Flash, and because the simulator is written in Flash, uh, the, you, you should use Explorer. It's going to be easier to use it. But when you uh, open up the simulator, you'll notice that you can choose different preset scenarios here. So the one we're going to spend most of our time with is Sun and Planet, but there are different ones. So there's like Sun, Planet, Moon that we can look at. There's Sun, Planet, Comet that we can look at. Uh, there's something called Slingshot that we can look at. So there's different scenarios that we can take a look at here. We're going to start with Sun and Planet. And uh, we're going to want to see the grid, the grid here. So if you can see these left and right lines, this will help us to do a little bit of sketching. So in these different scenarios, what I'm going to ask you to do, here's the graph space. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is to set up the simulator according to the conditions that I specify here. So I'm going to ask you, make sure that these things are all set up. And for each uh, scenario, I have a little table here. And I'm asking you to, to change a certain condition a little bit and see how it affects both the shape of the orbit and the time that it takes the planet to, uh, to do that orbit. So for instance, for this first scenario, I'm asking you to change the velocity of the planet, the, the starting speed of the planet. We're going to start at 120, then we'll try 140, then we'll try 180. So I'll kind of show you how to do this, and I'll mention a few of these other scenarios as well. And remember, the whole object here is to be able to describe orbits. We want to be able to describe this is how they behave. So here's our simulator, and you can see here's our star, our sun, our massive center of our solar system, and then here's our planet. And I've already set it to sun and planet. Um, and uh, you can fine-tune things down here. So if I click Reset, I can actually fine-tune some of these parameters down here. But for right now, let's just go ahead and click Start. And if you watch my planet, there it goes around the sun. And I can stop it whenever I want. You can always click Stop, and you can always click Reset. So when I click Start, what I can see is that the time is ticking down here. And if I stop it right at one orbit, it takes about 8.4 seconds, whatever unit of time this is. So I can, for one thing, time how long it takes the planet to make one revolution around its star. And you can always just reset. And if you are ever in doubt as to whether it has reset properly, just go back up here and just select the scenario again, and it will make sure to reset. Now, the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to, to kind of mess around with the velocity and see what happens. To do that, there's really two ways to do it. There's one way that I'm going to ask you to do it, though. You can go down here. Sometimes you have to click Reset first. You can go down here, and you can choose the velocity that the planet starts with. So that was 120. That was 120, the, the velocity that it started at. Now we're going to look at 140. Uh, so if I set it to 140 and I let it go, oops, I forgot to change it. Just type it in, 140. I'm going to click Start. And look at how that orbit has changed. That by increasing the velocity, the starting velocity of the planet, shot it way out here, made a bigger orbit, and it took more than 17 units of time. So it started out, it was about 8.3. And then down here, it takes about 17.4 or so. So we can see that the faster we started the planet, the more time it takes to elapse to run its orbit. Um, and then you'll want to sketch these on here as well. So that's uh, if you're changing velocity. But there's other things that we can change. So we can come back here and we can say, OK, collect that same, click that same scenario. We can also change the position of the planet, the distance from the star. So the planet is set at 150, and I can prove this. If we take a tape measure, uh, I, we can actually um, measure the distance. Uh, here, let's do this. We can measure the distance from the star to the planet. And you can see, I know it's maybe small on your screen. It's about 150 if I use the, the tape measure. Now, you don't really have to use the tape measure for the simulation. I'm just sort of proving a point. But if we start it off at 150, we already saw how this planet moves. Uh, and then we can start it, stop it. OK, there's our time, about 8.3, 8.4, um, which I can type in here. Now, if we come back here, um, I want us to actually try to reposition the planet. So to do that, you're not going to change anything down here in the uh, fine-tune settings. What you're actually going to do is you're going to click and you're going to grab that planet, and you're going to move it. So notice that I was able to click and grab it. I put the planet closer to the sun. Everything else stays the same. I'm going to click Start, 
Oh. Wow, that was really fast. We can actually reset this. So that takes just a little north of 2.8 seconds, right? 2.8. And so the idea here is that I'm simply just trying to show you how to use the simulator in order to accomplish the tasks that you need to accomplish. Um, after you, you do those things, all right, there's another thing I want you to change, and that's the mass of the planet orbiting the star. Don't worry about changing the mass of the star. Just change the mass of the planet. One thing I'm going to ask you to do is to choose another scenario where we have uh, what are called ellipses. So if we click that, here's a new scenario that we can run and we can watch how these different objects behave. Um, here are, uh, here's another one where we can take a look at the uh, planet and uh, a comet. And you can see how does the planet and the comet, the blue one, how do these behave differently? Uh, and we can learn, we can use this to learn about those. Uh, we can also go ahead and look at how the moon behaves. We can look at uh, a, a maneuver called a slingshot. And for each of these scenarios, I just want to go want you to go through and answer the questions um, and and circle the correct answers for these different different conditions. Uh, and then there's some sort of laws or ideas I want you to come up with toward the end of this um, worksheet, where um, you're going to try to to sort of generalize what are some laws or relationships between for instance, velocity and size of the orbit, or between the starting distance and the time of orbit, or between the starting distance uh, and, uh, oh, I just realized there's a typo, uh, or between, you know, different, different uh, characteristics of, of those stars, so, um, and, and orbits. So that's what I want you to be able to do, is just use this simulator in order to describe the motions of orbiting objects, and to figure out how, if you change the conditions of that system, how that affects its simulator. So all this kind of just starting from the, the, the idea of, Sirius, the sort of odd companion that's circling around it, these strange motions that we observed of this star, um, you know, we're, we're using our simulator in order to explore those, those strange motions. So I hope that this video was helpful and kind of pointing you in, in the right directions for where do we want to go with the simulator and what is the purpose of the simulator. We want to be able to describe the motions of stars and planets in space.